Hi, I'm here with Eddie Jowd, and he is a full stack developer, community builder, content creator, public speaker, and GitHub star. And I had to glance at that a couple of times. We've got several titles in, but thank you for joining me, Eddie. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here. It's going to be great to geek out with you. Yes, I've been looking forward to this conversation. And I like to start with a couple of lighthearted questions just to warm things up. Like, oh, I know you're a digital nomad, and we'll get into that, but traveling and maybe eating healthy don't always go together. So, and I, I kind of like junk food anyway. What's your favorite junk food, especially when traveling? Um, I'm not much of a junk food person. Uh, so for me, that's a hard question. And being allergic to gluten, it cuts out oh. a lot of junk food food yeah. as well. So for me, if I can get a gluten-free pizza, which is very rare, that's my, my junk food that I'll have kind of once a year. You have some discipline, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not from choice, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, here it is. Uh, it's, it's spring or almost spring here in the U.S. I'm near Kansas City and right in the middle. And uh, getting warm and I need to uh, get back into shape once again. Winter has done me wrong, <laughs> they would say. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another one I, I love to ask just to get things started because it's interesting how everyone got started. So what was your first editor that you were writing code in? I'm glad you said editor and not IDE. So for yeah. me, editor, it was notepad. <laughs> yes. That, that's where I was. I, and I've, I've heard several other things, TextPad and, and so on yeah. too. But when I oh, It might be TextPad, started... sorry. I beg your pardon. It might be TextPad. I forget. It's so long ago. But yeah, one of those <laughs> terrible applications that had like five undos only or something. I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I, if I remember correctly, and, and this is going back for me too, but Notepad was what was built into maybe like Windows 95 or 98. Yes, exactly. So it must have been Notepad. And oh my God, when Notepad++ came out, that was like a game changer. Yes. <laughs> we come from the same background here. I'm enjoying that. Syntax highlighting. More than one undo. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, IDEs now, I, I cannot complain about VS Code or the others because I, I know where we came from. Exactly. VS Code is just like... A Swiss army knife in comparison. <laughs> okay, now let's move on to some serious questions. And this is one that, that I have been asking in interviews lately because I think it's important. I have a lot of beginners that subscribe, subscribe to my channel. And I think you have some beginners that uh, follow your channel as well, which we'll talk about where to find you on the web. But if you could only give one piece of advice, kind of like this if you're lost on an island, but you only had one thing type of question, but one piece of advice for beginners, what would you share with them? Get into open source. And if I may, can I elaborate why? Absolutely. Awesome. So the reason why I say get into open source is because any tech project that you work on in a company or a startup or open source side project, there is more to it than the code. And you need to practice those skills. You need to practice raising an issue and giving it context. You need to practice raising a pull request and getting feedback. You need to practice giving feedback to others. Communication and collaboration is vital for any real world project. And that's really hard to test in an interview, um, but actually really quite easy to demonstrate if you do this in open source. And so candidates can stand out from the crowd very easily by putting their GitHub profile um, on their resume, but can stand out even further by putting one issue that they're proud of, one pull request that they're proud of, and it doesn't have to be a big pull request. It just needs to be explained well, like how to test it, why you made the changes, what issues does it refer to, those sorts of things. And one pull request that you've reviewed, because that is a really important skill to have, and it's really hard. I know some people are gonna say, well, I'm a junior, I'm not gonna review pull requests. I worked at a, a bank in the UK and it was important for every pull request to get reviewed by two people. And each and those two people were one senior and one junior because they look for different things. A senior is looking, does it, does it fit into the project? Does it, you know, is it maybe performant or secure? Whereas a junior is, can I understand this? Does it make sense? Like they can ask some really good questions and give such valuable feedback from a different perspective, which is an impossible for a senior to do. So um, yeah, it will benefit you so much. Please get involved.
Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel, aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration, and now back to the video. Outstanding advice, Eddie. Thank you so much. And now let, let's build on that because I know, uh, you know you're a champion of open source and, and most of your content is about that. So for the absolute beginner here that's just learning HTML, CSS, is there a, even a way to kind of succinctly or briefly say what open source is? Sure, absolutely. So the way I like to explain open source is it's like Instagram, but for... I don't just want to say code, but for text files. So it could be documentation, it could be infrastructure as code, it could be automated tests. So basically kind of text as it were. Um, and just like on Instagram, someone can like it, someone can kind of follow you, uh, they can comment. But the great thing about open source is they can make improvements and make it better. So I used to try and make all my work perfect if there's such a thing but perfect from my perspective and now i don't i just want to be good enough i put it out there and the community come along and do it way better and improve it than i could but at least the user gets it early so i would say it's like social it's social coding is what github call it so it's like social media but on steroids well that is that's an awesome explanation i like that analogy as well Say, moving on, and we will talk about how to find your content. And I do want to highlight that everyone should find your content because <laughs> it you. deals with open source and you need to learn about that. Uh, but moving on, Honeypot did a cool little video on you and your wife as digital nomads. And that's just something cool that is possible, of course, in today's world. And as developers, a lot of us have remote jobs. I do as well. So could you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, for those that didn't watch the video, maybe how you got into it, but also just, you know, what's something that's just awesome about being a digital nomad? Oh, there's so many things awesome about being a digital nomad. It's not everything's perfect. I don't want to give that kind of the Instagram view. I like to be realistic. Um, traveling is tiring uh, and it requires a lot of planning if you're going to certain events and you're trying to tie in travels and, and so forth. And time zones are really difficult, but you know, everyone's really understanding clients. If you plan ahead and uh, enough ahead, they will get up early. They will stay up late to kind of accommodate. So you don't have to do things like three in the morning. It might be later for you, but it's not silly late. Um, so the, the thing is you get to explore so many different places. You get to try different foods. You get to just do things that you couldn't dream of. And you get to meet amazing people doing the same things. And it's just, it's wonderful. Um, it's just so different to, kind of even if you work remotely at home then you kind of finish work and you kind of maybe watch tv or play some games and you go to bed it's very different when you're kind of traveling and you want to go see something for a couple of hours and you might do it like lunchtime or, or early evening or something like that but you've kind of gone and done something you've done it maybe with your friends or your family and you've met people while doing it you just come back just so energized you sleep better and you wake up the next day and be even more productive so it is just it is just awesome i, I wouldn't i wouldn't change it for the world my only uh disappointment is i didn't i wish i'd done it sooner i completely understand and uh i'm looking forward to traveling more myself i'm, I'm in that situation i awesome. have teenagers at home they're in school full time and and all of those things. And of course, we tie ourselves down. But when, when I can travel more, I do plan to do that. And I, I enjoy, by the way, w let's mention uh, the channel you have with your wife on your travels also when we talk about where to meet you. And we're going to wrap up this first part of the interview. And before we do that, could you please tell everybody where to meet you? Or I said meet you, where to find you on the web? And you've got several different sites and a couple of YouTube channels to uh, promote here. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, so yes, the, the YouTube channel I have with Sarah, which is our digital nomad uh, kind of travels, adventures and tips and so forth, uh, is called Eddie and Sarah Explore. And then um, all my content on Twitter and YouTube where I'm most active is my name that you can kind of see on the screen. So Eddie Jowd, you can find me across platforms there. And you know, EddieJowd.io, you can see all my digital products that you can download and so forth. So lots of exciting things happening at the moment. Something coming out in the next couple of days as well. So uh, yeah, super, super exciting. Awesome. And you're very active on Twitter. So want to find you there. And 
I'm going to put links to all of that in the description, and I've probably showed a little bit of it on the screen already. Now, we're wrapping up part one of this interview, but I want to mention part two is going to be available on my Patreon channel, where Eddie has some more knowledge for us. Thank you for joining me today, Eddie. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was great to geek out with you. Hey guys, I recently started a Patreon and I'm already giving shout outs to Holy Coder, who is a progress provider, and Eldad, who joined at the senior member level. Also, shout outs to all of the junior members that have joined. Thank you all so much. You're helping me reach my goals. And if you haven't joined, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. I've got exclusive content there that you won't find on YouTube, and I've also got early release content. Hope to see you there. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.